Yes, tonight another delightful musical is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon Fay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, tonight we're going to hear the story behind the scenes of two great music makers, Gilbert and Sullivan, in a delightful operetta called Pirates of Piccadilly. <laughs> Young lady, come in here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gilbert. I've been waiting for days to see you and Mr. Sullivan. I brought my own music. Well, you look like a young lady with taste. Well, I've had an extensive musical background, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, I speak Spanish and French. Mm hmm. And what do you think of this carpet? Uh, the, the carpet? Uh -huh. The beautiful office carpet you've ever seen in your whole life. Well, yes, it's very nice. Nice? Uh, if you like that sort of thing. You see, Sullivan, she admits you haven't a smattering of taste. I'm a great admirer of Mr. Sullivan's music. She has no taste whatsoever. <laughs> now, just a minute, Gilbert. My dear, what's your name? Jesse Bond. Miss Bond. How can you possibly like this man's music? Arthur Seymour Sullivan knows only two melodies. One of them is God Save the King, and one of them isn't. <laughs> Your stories and lyrics, Mr. Gilbert. Send her away. She hasn't got the taste of a cucumber. But Mr. Sullivan. How any human being in his right mind can abide the trivia this music hall hack calls lyrics is more than I can understand. That concludes your audition, Miss Bond. Leave your address with the receptionist. But Mr. Gilbert, I haven't even sung for you. We'll call you if we need you. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, Sullivan, get this carpet out of our office. If you could to pay half of the cost, you couldn't make me move. I'm wandering minstrel, I think. Well, that's how I met Gilbert and Sullivan. Have you ever been in love with two men who hated each other? Well, I got a part, a walk-on in a brand-new nautical comic opera they called HMS Pinafore. I don't suppose any of us will ever forget those rehearsals, especially poor Mr. When Grossman. When I was a lad, I served a term and thought this boy to an attorney's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the... No, Mr. Grossmith! No, no, no! Why, is something wrong, Mr. Gilbert? I fully realize, Mr. Grossmith, that the music is working against you. <laughs> but a little more animation, please, in the lyrics. Well, may I try again? You may. When I went, I served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I had the window. Stop! <laughs> I not only write the show. I must go up on the stage and show everybody how to sing. Now listen, Mr. Wilson. And softly, please, orchestra. I don't want any of that dreadful music to drown out a single syllable. <laughs> Begin. When I was a lad, I served his term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished up the handle of the big front door. He polished up the handle of the big front door. I polished up the handle so carefully that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He polished up the handle so carefully that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. You see, Grossmith? Of legal knowledge I acquired such a grip that they took me into partnership. And the junior partnership I ween was the only ship that I ever had seen. Was the only ship that he ever had seen. That kind of ship so suited me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. That kind of ship so suited me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. 
I grew so rich that I was sent by a pocket borrowing to Parliament. I always voted at my party's call, and I never thought of thinking for myself at all. He never thought of thinking for himself at all. I fought so little, they rewarded me by making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He fought so little, they rewarded me by making him the ruler of the Queen's Navy. That is the way it should be sung, Mr. Grossmith. Now, would you try it again, please? Uh, certainly, certainly. <laughs> When I was a dad, I served a term as office boy to turn no! and leave the witness and I... No, Mr. Grossman, no! <laughs> what, what seems to be wrong, Mr. Sullivan? Wrong! I walk into the theater and I hear you massacring my music. Now, I admit the lyrics are working against you. <laughs> How any human being with only two tonsils and one pair of lungs can garble all that gabble, I'll never know. <laughs> Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Sullivan, you better get somebody else. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this. I like the whole song. <laughs> Though they fought, they turned out enchantment and a national love affair developed between the audience and the stage. A magic emerged. The magical word was and. The and in Gilbert and Sullivan. Alone they were a couple of wanderers. Have you noticed how the word wandering runs through their songs? Well, maybe I'm especially aware of it because of my first solo in Pirates of Penzance. <laughs> This was a dreadful performance. The words completely drowned out the music. If you and your blasted wind instruments had blown any louder, we wouldn't have to go to America. They could have heard the show from here. <laughs> Why, I practically broke my arm conducting that major general nonsense. Singers must stop for breath occasionally, Mr. Gilbert. Rose Smith did it all wrong. Hold the orchestra in Morris. We're going to run that number again. Mr. Grossmith. Ah, uh, yes, Gilbert. Sit down in the front row and listen. Here's how that song should be sung. Yeah, I don't know what you're bothering about. This show won't run for three nights. If you'd only let me cut a few of the words. My words, Mr. Sullivan, are precious pearls strung on the rude hemp of your melodies. <laughs> now wave at those musicians and we'll begin. 
I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England and the court that fights historical. From marathon to Waterloo and order categorical. I'm very well acquainted too in matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. You see, Mr. Grossmith, the words aren't too long. Your breath is too short. <laughs> With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I the scientific names of beings and amalculus. But still in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of the general. But still in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, he is the very model of the very general. I know I'm at the kiss to reeking office and Sir Canadox. I answer how to cross each type of pretty taste for paradox. I quote a nearly jigs all the crimes of Heliogabalus. In conics, I can flow peculiarities for abulus. I can tell undoubted Raphael from Jared Dowson's opinies. I know the token chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. And I can hum a few of which have heard the music's dinner for. Nothing to it, really, Grossmith. <clears throat> And whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. Then I can write a washing bill in Babylonic uniform And tell you every detail of Caractacus's uniform And short and matters vegetable, animal and mineral I am the very model of a modern major general Still so a man is vegetable, animal and mineral He is the very model of a modern major general Easiest thing I've ever sung I don't have to tell you that Pirates of Penzance ran a lot longer than three nights. Then Sullivan was knighted and Gilbert was not. That's when the split-up really began. Mr. Doyley Cart, their producer, tried to patch it up, but only made matters worse. Gentlemen, gentlemen, listen to me. If you're talking to both of us, Cart, you may just nod to me. But be sure to bow to his lordship. Gilbert, Sullivan, please, one more show for the fall season. I wouldn't stay in the same room with that hack. Uh, uh, collaborate by mail, through me, anyway. By mail? And take a chance that one of my compositions might be lost? Huh. You could always replace it by consulting an old hymnal. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. And don't try to write, see, or contact me again as long as I live. The same to you and many of them. That's really when the wandering began. The wandering is the line of being a shred. Not poor, not penniless, but unfulfilled. A bell with songs and snatches and dreamy lullabies. A dark stage at the Savoy, no laughter, no music. My catalog is long through every passion ranging. And the whole nation began praying that they'd stop wandering and put the and back into Gilbert and Sullivan. I tune my soul, soul, song. So We'll return for the second act of Pirates Piccadilly in just a moment. Thousands of people gathered in Tracy, Minnesota to attend the 25th annual Boxcar Day. This traditional event, sponsored by the entire community, included a long parade of bands and floats, sports contests, and many other features. <laughs> The principal speaker was Mayor Joseph Huberty, who said, Today, as on each Labor Day, for a quarter of a century, we residents of Tracy are proud to have thousands of our neighbors from Minnesota join us to celebrate Boxcar Day. Boxcars have been a part of America for so long that many of us rather take them for granted. But we here in Tracy know what railroad boxcars mean to us as producers, as marketers, 
as consumers. We see the long trains of empty boxcars moving west for grain loading. And we see the loaded cars moving east to all parts of the country. We realize that today, and it was today as it was 25 years ago, we realize that today we depend on railroad boxcars to carry our products to market and to bring us the necessities and luxuries of life we enjoy. That's why Tracy welcomes this annual opportunity to pay tribute to the boxcar for its important part in our daily life and to the railroads for serving us so dependably and so well. That was what Mayor Joseph Huberty of Tracy, Minnesota said at his community's annual observance of Boxcar Day. Although you may not often stop to think of it, you too depend on the familiar, hard-working railroad freight car for almost everything you eat, wear, and use. For it takes the tremendous carrying capacity which only the railroad's almost two million freight cars can provide to link farm, forest, mine, and factory with village, town, and city in every part of the nation. Yes, these cars are the very basis of the mass transportation that makes possible the marvel of America's rich agriculture and its mass production. And the railroad freight car is the foundation of our distribution system, giving you, the consumer, the widest possible choice in the things you buy. Now here is Act Two of Pirates of Piccadilly, starring Gordon MacRae as W.S. Gilbert and Dorothy Warrenshold as Jesse Bond, with Willard Waterman as Arthur Sullivan. been an international tragedy if those two had remained separated. Gilbert wrote many charming plays by himself, but they gathered dust on the shelves and on theater seats. Sullivan wrote a few pomperas whose names we don't even remember. And then one day I ran into Mr. Gilbert. Hi, hello, Jesse. Hello, Mr. Gilbert. We've missed you. I've missed all of you. Jesse. Yes, sir. Do you ever meet up with that composer? You know the one I mean, sir. What's his name? Mr. Sullivan? Uh, sir Arthur? Ah, that's the one. His name was on the very tip of my tongue. Well, I expect to see him at a party this weekend. I happen to have a libretto here. A little Japanese thing that might be pleasant. And do you know his silly melodies might be just the thing for it? Oh, Mr. Gilbert. Only don't tell him I said that. Oh, I'll be reading it all weekend. He'll have to notice. You might point out that Tit Willow number. Very few words and very slow. Even a chance for the music to sneak off by itself for a few bars. That might flatter the old boy. Oh, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Sullivan loves it. He said he'll risk collaborating by mail. And he's already set the music. Oh, let me see that. On a tree by a river, a little tom tit, hmm, sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. Why, that's not bad. Not bad at all. The old boy's improving. He must be taking lessons. <laughs> of course, the lyric is rather fascinating. Don't you think so, Jesse? And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit? Singing willow, tit willow, tit willow. Is it weakness of intellect, birdie? I cry, or a rather tough worm in your little inside? With a shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh. Now I feel just as sure as I'm sure that my name 
isn't well, did well, did well. That was blighted affection that made him exclaim, Oh, will, did will, did will. And if you remain callous and obdurate, I shall perish as he did, and you will know why. Though I probably shall not exclaim as I die, oh, will, it will. And that opening night of the Mikado, the audience cried and shook the theater with their applause. And I, I was in a Japanese fairyland, moonstruck behind the footlights. Observe his flame, that blessed thing, the moon silhouette. Your highness, there's not a trace upon her face of diffidence or shyness. She bowed my step through the night and joined me on a claim. And the truth to tell, she lights up well, so I for one. the strangest collaboration in history. Gilbert and Sullivan wrote opera after opera, and yet they rarely met. Occasionally, they took bows from opposite sides of the stage. Then, the night of the opening of the gondoliers, a strange thing happened. The audience came early, even before the orchestra began to tune up. And backstage, we heard them. What's happening? The show hasn't begun yet. Yeah. Who's singing? The orchestra isn't even in the pit. It's the audience, Miss Gilbert, the entire audience. They're singing your song. Yes. Why, so they are. Why, Sullivan, you old sentimental fool. You're crying. Now, those aren't glistening tears rolling down your nose, Gilbert. Why, we're talking to each other. Yes, so we are. It's been a long time. Why haven't we been able to be friends? Frankly, I don't think we ever liked each other very much. Hmm? Maybe our operas have been better because we fought like pirates. <laughs> We've been nicely self-satisfied, leaning on each other in fraternal dependence. We might not have produced what we did. Listen, listen to that applause. Very sweet music, applause. Yes, yes, yes. Why, they're applauding your melodies, Mr. Sullivan. No, no, no. Your lyrics, Mr. Gilbert. Do you know we're getting along fine? Yes. Absolutely top rate. Shall we begin a new work? Immediately. In person, face to face? Shake hands on that. We'll go into the office right now and start to work. You first, Sir Arthur. Uh, lyrics always precede music. My dear friend. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, isn't it gratifying to listen to the audience singing our old songs and know that you and I are as much of an institution as, well, as Westminster Abbey. Yes, it's a wonderful feeling. Just a moment. 
Where did this carpet come from? <laughs> oh, it's something of a surprise. I felt the office needed a new carpet. It's a worse monstrosity than the original. Am I expected to pay for half of this? Well, everything is 50-50. Equal billing, credit, royalties. I will see you dead before I pay a copper farthing for this, this floor rag. The greatest mistake I ever made in my life was ever coming within 10 feet of you. You, I want you nothing to do you, 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 feeling happy. You... Gentlemen, gentlemen, curtain going up. The show is about to begin. Piccadilly, the minstrel boys, the wanderers, God love them, and three cheers for them. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The lovely Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Willard Waterman, who was Sir Arthur Sullivan, <laughs> Thurl Ravenscroft, and our entire company. Pirates of Piccadilly, based on the lives and music of Gilbert and Sullivan, was written especially for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? A few minutes ago, you heard what the mayor of Tracy, Minnesota said today in tribute to the railroad boxcar, and mighty important it is to all of us. But boxcars by themselves are not much use. It takes locomotives and tracks and signals and shops and all the other facilities of a railroad to turn out America's essential transportation. And more than that, it takes people, railroad people, all kinds of workers, to all of whom on this Labor Day, we pay tribute. Dorothy, you were a delight. Uh, thank you, Gordon. See, the voice of Sir Arthur Sullivan tonight seems familiar. That's because it belongs to Willard Waterman, who is radio's famous Great Gildersleeve here on NBC. Shh, Gordon, not so loud. Little Leroy will never believe I wrote Pinafore. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention the lost court. <laughs> well, Willard, if we find it, we'll send it right over to your studio. Yeah, thank you. What's on the show train next week, Gordon? We've decided it's high time we made you a ballerina, Dorothy. And so we're pinning a backstage story of the ballet. I say pinning, I mean spinning. A backstage story of the ballet set to the magnificent music of Tchaikovsky. And it's called Swan Lake. Well, I'll practice flapping my wings all week. <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Willard. Good night, Gordon. All uh, aboard! Dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out and so until next Monday night in our new musical play, Swan Lake. This is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face, a fraction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. This evening, Lois Hunt stars on The Voice of Firestone on NBC.